it is Monday morning, bright and early. Good morning. This is uh, Off the Press, the program where we we'll take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. We'll dissect it as much as we can, and of course, as much as time would allow us to. I have with me this morning to do so, uh, Libra Soshoma, who is a legal practitioner in studio. And then, of course, Aisha Osori, sorry, Aisha Osori, Aisha, forgive my manners, <laughs> will be joining us remotely from Germany, as always. Good morning, Aisha. Good morning, Amasha. Okay. Well, yes, we're both here. Libras, Aisha says hi. Good morning, Aisha. All right. Uh, we will begin with uh, the Punch newspaper. We'll have a couple of them uh, before us this morning, but I'll read out the headlines, as always, and then I'll begin with you, Aisha, as agreed. So we proceed. The Punch newspaper, CBN, Naira Defense, Naira Defense depletes foreign reserve by $3.17 billion. That story is on page 21. Already displayed. Thank you, guys. And FIRS ignores Buhari's directive, sacks nine directors on page 7. Now, we've paid federal government $13 billion for gas purchase. That's according to NLNG on page 22. And the federal government impounds British aircraft, alleges illegal flight, begins probe on page 22. The big story for the Punch newspaper, police lament absence of COVID-19, job allowance, face masks, and others on pages two and seven of the Punch newspaper. Just at the top there, we have the regular um, figures on COVID-19 updates. So uh, Nigeria stands at 5,959 5, as at today, uh, 1,594 1, discharged and 182 deaths uh, so far. And we also have from the global scene, we are now 4.7 million uh, on the global scenes. All right, if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, you will see other stories that are making the headlines. We stand high risk of contracting coronavirus, policemen fear, and PTF submits proposal to Buhari. President addresses Nigerians today, some point today. That will happen. Lagos quarantines, uh, 40, quarantines 43 returnees from Ghana and other West African countries. Just scroll up a little if I would ask the guy. So we have picked the guys on uh, the production team. Yeah, already there. Thank you very much. We have picture stories there. And pastors find 5,000 Naira bag three hour community service. Find out why on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. And then five arrested for beating Ogun Peacemaker to death. Why would you do that? That's the reason, page five. Edo Ondo polls, APC in dilemma over mode of primaries on page 14. And then Oyo shots firm where 30 workers test positive, 30. That's a lot. That story is also on page 10. And then Lagos gives conditions for reopening of churches and mosques and, other, and others on page 11. That conversation has been ongoing. Family accuses DPO of shooting policemen dead on pages 4 and 5. This newspaper has got a lot of people shooting and dying. Well, lastly, we have Miners Ask Oshun to hand over Chinese for prosecution on page 11. Aisha. Over to you. We'll begin with you. If you can hear me. I can hear you. Great. Which story is catching your attention this morning? Well, actually, there are many. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> Libras agrees with you. There are many interesting <laughs> ones. So begin with one. <laughs> it's a buffet with lots of questions. Well, okay, I'll start with the illegal flight. Okay. Just because it's a bit crazy to hear that there's we don't know. I mean, what what does that mean uh, to have illegal flights? Do you mm. understand? Like, does that mean the National Aviation Authority doesn't know about these flights? These flights are not logged. These are like, I don't understand. They were supposed to come in into the country based on humanitarian needs, but you know, uh, somewhere okay. along the line, there was commercial. Okay, to, like a passenger flight, exactly. But that still means that. Does that mean we don't have? the right processes in place to make sure that, you know, if it's humanitarian, surely when they're offloading uh, officials, Nigerian officials are there waiting, there's a protocol. How is it possible for them to be able to lift passengers without people knowing? But anyway, it's a good thing that we managed to nip that in the bud quickly. Mm -hmm. Can you still oh. hear me? And then the other one yeah. that was interesting was the APC primaries in Edo. 
just very quickly, I find it odd that the APC is the one that is facing this dilemma. And although I haven't read the news piece, what came to my mind was wondering, shouldn't INEC by now have set up some sort of guidelines to, um, you know, provide a framework for whether elections are going to happen this year or not, considering the pandemic, you know, whether we're going to have elections in Edo and I think Osho. So for me, what's the story in terms of INEX responsibility? There are many countries that are holding elections even though they shouldn't. I think Benin Republic had local government elections yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, even okay. though, and then Burundi was also did that, even though, and they had to expel the WHO mm -hmm. in order to be able to get go ahead with that. But I'm just thinking Nigeria should be proactive. We should already know by now if we'll be able to hold elections or not and be able to say to the parties, you know, stand down. All right. So we need some thinking, mm -hmm. is what yeah. I'm saying. Libras is itching to say something. He's agreeing no, I, with you. <laughs> All right, Libras. I, I completely agree with uh, Maisha. First term um, on, on, on the flight, even if it came on a humanitarian ground. Mm -hmm. Um, there are protocols, there are procedures for even lifting passengers. You know, is it that these procedures, you know, were not observed and then the flight was able to, you know, Magically. operate commercially? <laughs> and that's on one hand. Um, the issue of uh, Medo, INEC intentionally said that they were going to go ahead with the stated plan initially Inspired before the, the COVID-19. I expect them to also have, you know, a, a, a process in place you know, against the backdrop of, of the fact that there is a pandemic and, and so to that, the primaries should take this format just the same way the courts are now, you know, encouraging the chief judge, chief justice had issued directive that courts should, you know, immediately, not just only decongest prisons, but also should come with practice direction to hold ve virtual sitting. Right. So I expect INEC also to have take cognizance of all of this crisis and then haven't, you know, insisted that we're going to go ahead with the election, you know, come up with a guideline and directives on how primaries should be conducted. Then the issue of Chinese mm -hmm. also, um, you find out that, you know, this is one story too many. Mm -hmm. We have situations where most of the foreigners that operate in our country do not either observe our labor laws or even when they observed, they are observing breach. Mm. I, I, you know, so there's something that we need to do. Why are we allowing that? Yeah, it, because, because yes, you're why you're looking for foreign direct investment, but the monitoring process, the monitoring and enforcement of our laws is, you know, in complete disarray. And so that's why government needs to step in in that direction. Foreigners that are op operating here, you remember the case of Ikorodu where Indians, you know, locked up people. Yeah. And, you know, they should observe our, our, our basic laws and, you know, respect human rights. And lastly, quickly, the, the major headline, police. Mm. It's very, very, it's a project that is dear to, to my heart. We have the kind of police that we have today because we do not, we see our police as, um, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And, and you do not expect the same people to travel abroad, win laurels, and then when they come here, you know, without necessary tools, you expect them to perform magic. That is why their police is not, policing in Nigeria is not encouraging to the best. Right. So you have to make it attractive. You have to provide them with the right tools. It is not now we should be begging for face masks mm -hmm. and, and the right tools for the police. In fact, yeah, just the other day when we were going home, this policeman stopped us and he didn't have a face mask and he was talking to us. <laughs> for a moment, I thought to myself, did he think he was immune to... You know our policemen buy uniform. They buy their own uniform. They buy st statement form writing materials you know and in some cases provide you know equipment for their own offices a policeman in nigeria no that's quoting, quite unfortunate quote me anywhere that's quite unfortunate aisha would you encourage anyone to be a nigerian police sadly not it's, it's, it's terrible our police have been terribly underused for years it's actually scary i like to think that part of from car covid to the funds of the people they would use some of the policemen are properly protected. They're not only protecting themselves, they're also protecting the public. Mm. There's actually, there's a vid, I think there's a uh, photograph that had gone viral on, on um, social media as usual. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it just showed a man without a mask. Well, a man who was selling masks but was not wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So he was being apprehended by two policemen who are also not wearing masks. So people are saying, you know, so the joke was like, so who is crazy here? But exactly. anyway... That's Nigeria. <laughs> All right. Uh, any, do you have any further intervention, Libros, before I move on to? Um, yes, briefly on the same um, punch newspaper. I think um, there's um, a headline. Let me quickly look at your punch okay. newspaper. There's one that caught my attention, attention also okay. on um, the issue of um, 
Uh, There's FRS, now. there is, we have paid um, for. Uh, yes, on the police also, the mm -hmm. f family accusing the DPO of, of shooting, shooting the police. police. You, you know, um, there was one time I was listening to the Metropolitan Police Officer in West Yorkshire uh, talking about, you know, the use of firearms, mm -hmm. that um, for you to, you know, operate firearms, you have to be properly trained for it. And, you know, because uh, some police in Leeds were attacked uh, um, by armed bandits and then, you know, it was there was this debate on whether every policeman should mm -hmm. handle firearms and you know he insisted that that shouldn't be that you have to be specially trained for it but here we give firearms to everybody mm -hmm. including some in some cases you see drunken policemen yes. with firearms at checkpoints so i think that's another area we need to actually look at and mm -hmm. review so that you know this the way police even misuse and abuse the use of firearms even amongst themselves is, is something that is very frightening yeah, I agree with you. All right, so we'll move on in the interest of time to the Nation newspaper. It will be displayed. Bank rejects payment to foreign business partners with Naira debit cards. That story is on page five of the Nation newspaper. Madagascar asked for 170,000 euros from federal government for cure drug. Did I not hear it was free at some point? All right, that story is on page 25. Now, President to unveil new guidelines today some point today, uh, he will give us the COVID-19 battle update. Um, we'll move on. Lagos lists uh, conditions to reopen businesses and worship centers. LCCI survey lockdown severely hits economy. Of course, that's the reason the front page of the nation newspaper. Buhari OK's suspension of deduction from state's cash. That's also on the front page. Governors get one year relief uh, to free up money for salary payment and others. It's on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And then we have the global figures on COVID-19 um, now at 4.7 globally and 315,000 plus deaths and 1.8 uh, plus recoveries. And for Nigeria, we are now on 5,959 uh, 5, uh, cases have been recorded. It's now displayed on your screen there, uh, so you can see. All right, um, we will begin now with you, Libras. Okay. Um, Aisha, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right, l let's begin with you, maybe. Uh, I read okay. out the headlines. I'm not sure if you heard all the ha headlines, but Ma Madagascar is asking that Nigeria pays 170,000 euros from the federal government for the, the cure drug. They're already calling it, well, for them it's the cure drug. Uh, we have said that we're going to subject our own to testing first. What's your thought on that? My competence, and I think I can admit that we thought it would be some sort of I shall quite okay. unfortunate your your okay. your connection is not quite clear. Do you, do you want to begin again? What's your thoughts on the Madagascar uh, Madagascar asking that Nigeria pay 170,000 euros? That's the question. I didn't quite yes. hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Much better now. Yeah, I would say that it we thought that I the the, the cure drugs was was a, a measure of was we'll that Madagascar and other African countries. But I think for me, the price tag is more the fact that this, the main ingredients in this drug, Artemisia, I think it's called, apparently it's all over the place in the north. So for me, it would be why haven't we tapped into it already and sort of started experimenting if we want to, instead of paying this exorbitant price tag. But I think it's also linked, this, this look for, this um, search for a cure, Obviously, it's a global one, and I think we need to be very, very careful about what we now start calling a cure and who is going to be ready to be experimented on. Um, so for me, those are even more important than the price tag. Do we have the money? Can we afford it? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, will it be used by anyone? Mm -hmm. And I think it goes to what we're expecting to hear from the president today in terms of his guidelines. For me, I mean, obviously, we're anticipating, but if we want to ease lockdowns, mm -hmm. what should be critical, what we should be considering is whether we've gotten our transmission under control. People say we've not yet peaked. So what is our exit strategy? What's the capacity of our healthcare systems? Can they cope? Can they detect, test, trace at this point? You know, we, we're now almost, we, we, we had the first case in February. We were locked down from, I think, the end of March. Yeah. So we've been this for like almost eight weeks now. What have we learned? Have we minimized spreads in hot places? Here in Germany, almost overnight, most 
pharmacies, hotels, there's now a plexiglass between you and, you know, whoever you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Have we put the place in our, in our shops, in our stores? In, if, if churches are going to open, how are they going to minimize contact? So for me, this would be the many interesting things I'd like to hear when the president uh, makes his, his remarks later today. I mean, talking about exit plan, Aisha, the World Health Organization, you know, they said sometime last week that we shouldn't expect uh, coronavirus going anytime soon. So, I mean, we might as well start planning of how to live with it, you know, and, you know, continue our our life. Libros. Yeah, um, fantastic. Um, Two things. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one is on... um, ease of lockdown and conditions for reopening of churches and mosques. Mm. Um, when the numbers were in hundreds, we locked down. And now that the numbers are in thousands, we have eased the lockdown and we are gradually returning life back to normal. To we have not done anything new. We have not, um, there is no cure. Um, not that the centers, the testing capacities have increased like it should be. And, and so, well, we are it more, has increased, okay, not, not as, as it should be, like okay. I said. We are more concerned now about, you know, the economy. Yes, I agree, hunger is a worse virus. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you need to be alive to even contend with hunger. You know, so a situation where, yes, we are treating people also. We also are not stating what we're using to treat. So it's almost with this, and you want people to believe that this thing is as serious as it is. And then you're taking all of these steps contrary to the belief. It's going to be very difficult for you to convince people that it is as serious as it is because you have not done anything new. I shall ask basic questions. What have we installed mm-hmm. to ensure that even if people go out, you know, you saw the markets on the 4th of May, you saw how Lagos was, you know, sure. in a total chaos. And then last week I asked this same question. Now we are talking about Madagascar cure. I think that should have, you know, also enabled us to put on our thinking cap mm-hmm. to say, yes, while we are testing this, we should also look for how we can, you know, develop us and mass produce. But initially, it was touted as a free, you know, a gift to us. Yeah. Now we're talking about the spirit of payment for it. Solidarity. The That's... first thing should be, how do we, do they spend money producing it? Definitely they want to. Mm. But how do we, we are not even done tests on it. We are not run clinical tests on it to ensure that you know it meets you know the 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 the, the required standard right. for you know consumption here. I'm already talking about the funds and the money to pay for it. So, which this should also make us look inward. Let us look inward and find you know a situation where we can also you know create our own cure. And then lastly, the federal government is crying that uh, there is no money, there is no funds, the funds are depleted, even the reserve is depleted. Yeah. And then also now the federal government has said, okay, so that state can pay salaries, there should be no more deductions. You know, how will the federal government, I expect also the federal government, the economic team to look at how will the federal government meet up its own responsibility? Or is it that the federal government have been taking so much that even without deduction they can still, you know, afford to meet up mm. with their responsibility. What is the state doing now to ensure that, you know, with this time they can show up their finances and don't have to rely, you know, on a Fidibotto system where you always run, you know, to the center to call a remedies. <laughs> Fidibotto system. Uh, Aisha, are you there with us? Yes, I believe. I'm here. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, looking at where we are today, it seems like we, we talk about the solutions but we don't see the practicality. What's different, you know, with where you are? You, you see, if in comparison to our situation here in Nigeria. Well, one thing that has excited me about you know, listening to the news, you know, catching up with family, hearing how everyone's coping, and what I see and experience here in Germany is that, you know, people are self-regulating. And it's made me think a lot about what is it about us that, we're unable to self-regulate. What is it about us? It's not like life has stopped down here. In fact, there was never any severe lockdown in the way that, you know, it was in, in, in Lagos or FCT. Mm-hmm. And yes, the numbers are high here. But you do get the sense that, you know, people understand the social okay. distancing laws. As I said, sh- schools have opened, shops have op- opened. Where before you just speak directly to a person, to a salesperson, there's now a plexiglass. You can see each other, but at least there's some sort of shield. Everybody's wearing their masks. They tell you that if you're going to go into transport, public transport, you must wear a mask. So for me, it made me think a lot about 
self-regulation. And I'm wondering, is it because of the high illiteracy rates in Nigeria? Is it because of the quality of our education? Is it because we run a very paternalistic, militarist, militaristic type of of government and culture where we have to be flogged, we have to be beaten, people think that they need to be yelled at, you know, why can't we self-regulate? So for me, I really think a lot more investment should go into behavior, behavioral change communication, you know, and that actually is what we should have seen massively between March and now, you know, billboards with maybe the sultans, the igwes, the whatever, the popular pastors and imams, them on radio, them on, you know, all the popular networks, whether it's BBC Hausa for the North, uh, Wazobia for the East and South. You know, we need a lot more communication to people so that they understand this. Because the truth is, that's the only way we're going to beat this. We're going to have to ease the lockdown because, as you said, hunger is a, is a more potent virus for many people than, than the coronavirus that seems more distant. So how do we bridge this gap where people understand and accept responsibility, not just for themselves, but for their community? Mm. Libra seems to have an idea why uh, we can't self-regulate. Yeah, you know what? Ah. In, in, in Germany, in Germany, the, the rules, there are sanctions to every disobedience. Right. You know, these sanctions didn't just come now. You know, it's ingrained in you. You already know that, you know, to every rule there are, you know, sanctions. And mm -hmm. so there is no abexa. Consequences for action. Exactly. So the, it's, you already have that mindset that since the government had said these are the procedures to be followed, Everybody will. You don't need to flog somebody to kill. You don't need to flog somebody to wear a face mask to go into public space because you can even be arrested for violating that rule. Mm -hmm. But here, the man who is the rule maker will be the first one to, to violate it. it. I just gave you an instance where the federal government will do something, you know, contrary to the position they are pushing, the, the narrative that they are pushing. And then you expect people to believe you know, that narrative. Mm -hmm. You have to not just tell a story, you live the story. Mm -hmm. You know, a situation where your president is receiving visitors, foreign visitors, without a face mask, and you want to imitate Trump. How do you, that picture alone tells a thousand stories. Too much you know? contrast. Yeah, exactly. So these are things we should, you know, learn to begin to do. Consider, look at Lagos, for example, when the lockdown was, um, when we had in, in March, you know, the lockdown was, when the lockdown was there, the rules, Funke Akindele was charged for violating the lockdown. A lot of people who ordinarily wanted to come out started self-regulating. But the moment you saw the attorney general with that crowd, you know, celebrating the victory of his, of his uh, of, uh, legal triumph, you know, it gives you, you know, some form of questioning. You know, see this that, that the issue. From 4th of March, the numbers that came out in Lagos, it's almost as if, you know, the coronavirus was over. And what did the government do? Nothing. Now you say, is lockdown, come out in the evening. Somebody mockingly said, maybe the coronavirus goes to sleep during the day mm -hmm. and comes out at night. Right. And I agree, lastly, there is no communication. Like, the communication is not as effective as, she, as it should be since we are not even applying sanctions. All right, let's just quickly take this day, which will be our last paper. Uh, 33 states defy agreements on road charges for telecoms on the front page there. It's already displayed, but it's continued on page nine. Uh, reports predict $17 billion decline in Nigerian oil revenue on page five of this day. And then of course, COVID-19, private sector and labor leaders oppose fresh lockdown. Buhari addresses nation today, unveils new measures. Buhari guest Oshibajo Economic Sustainability Committee reports this week on the front page. And federal government demand ASU suspend strike before next negotiations. Aisha, what new thing would you be expecting today in terms of the president's briefing of the nation. Any new thing you expected? Well, I'll a lot more um, how we've ramped up. You know, it, it should be a report card of sorts for me, honestly. I would like to hear how Nigeria, whether on the federal level or state level, have really ramped up our capacity to detect, to test, to trace. That would give me a lot of comfort. I'd like to also hear if we, if we have more PPEs now, not just for health workers, but also for frontline workers and essential workers like the policemen, uh, like, you know, service delivery and things like that. And honestly, if we're going to ease uh, the lockdown for, for large gatherings like mosques and churches, even though I'm aware that they've probably been going on, it would be nice to hear what guidelines have been discussed with the, with the pastors and the imams and will be implemented going forward so that we can all be watching out for that.
All right. Libros, what's your last thought on this? Yes, my, my thoughts are Lagos is already considering reopening the economy in, in full. And yet, today's number for Lagos is about 177 or mm. so. And um, is it that um, Lagos has found a way, a better way to, you know, treat um, the virus that, you know, even if it happens, so these isolation centers are enough mm. to take all of um, the cases that will come, or that, you know, all the stories that we'll be hearing are just mess stories and, you know. And then, coupled with the fact that I, I expected, like Aisha said, let's have, you know, a rundown of the report card. You know, this is what we have learned. And having learned this, these are the steps we have taken so far. And these are the steps we are taking preemptively so that we don't have, you know, um, numbers. And then no matter how, you know, fit the fatalities that we might have, you know, these are what we will do to mm -hmm. ensure that, you know, we, we minimize. Because whether we like it or not, it has come to stay with us. Mm. And I would expect a day where, you know, somebody would just walk to a chemist and say, ah, I feel I have coronavirus. Ah. Let me just go and take drugs. <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond <laughs> about this. Aisha, oh, sorry, want to say thank you very much for your time this morning and to keep Thanks. safe. And of course, Libras in the studio, thank you for My being pleasure. with me also. All right, that's where we call it a wrap on Off the Press this morning. I, I don't know what Libros was talking about mm -hmm. by medicine for COVID, but please do stay safe out there until this is completely over. I am Amaka Okoye.